Hey everyone, uh, I don't know if you can see this, if um, anybody's there yet, but I guess I'll uh, give it a second for people to realize that we're doing this. Um, but anyway, hi everyone uh, out there. I want to say thank you so much. I'm coming to you, by the way, today, right now, from my studio. This is my studio. This is where all the magic happens. That's right. Uh, well, maybe not all the magic, but some of the magic. The most important magic, the musical magic that I love, that endears my heart, my soul, and all of yours, hopefully. But anyway, um, that's not why I'm here today. Oh, thank you. I can see you. Hi, Kelly. How you doing? Um, anyway, so uh, I've got a lot of things I want to kind of roll off. I don't have a lot of time because I'm late for a dinner meeting, but I wanted to just check in with you guys, give you a quick update about what's happened today some thoughts that I have, and where we are with this whole movement and the progress. So, first of all, I want to thank everybody out there, all of the Feld fam, all of my friends and fans and people out there in the Twitter universe, the Twitterverse, um, for supporting this and for helping and for retweeting and for going crazy on this. I know you guys have been amazing. Some of you have been beyond amazing and have been doing this relentlessly for like years. As many of you know, I've been trying to get my story out on the record clearly for 10 years now. Um, it's just about coming up on 10 years uh, since I started writing the book. Uh, I mean, I made my first statements, of course, right after Corey passed. And uh, I've been trying very hard to get the clear story out, the whole story out, the whole truth out. And part of that, so we all understand, is about bringing this to justice, bringing it to the court systems, because there's nothing that any of us can do with a bunch of names, okay? Names don't get us anywhere. What gets us progress is the work that I'm doing with Child USA, the ability to go in state by state and try and impose legislation that calls for reform of the statutes of limitations, while at the same time, creating a look-back window for a period of time significant enough that victims like myself, like many of you out there who reach out to me all the time, can finally get a chance to bring some type of justice. Now, a lot of times these are civil cases, which means it only gets you money. And I know the guys who abuse me probably don't have much of it. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I mean, I know one of them definitely doesn't, but the other guy might. But... The point is, is that once these cases start popping, what happens is then all of these other people start to come forward. As we've seen with many of the celebrity cases, as we've seen time and time again, you know, when one person comes out and speaks, when it's true, you're going to get a string of people. Why? Because predators are always serial predators, okay? They don't just do it once. You look at the Jeffrey Epsteins, the R. Kellys, you know, what's in common with these guys. They do it over and over and over again. So I am very confident that the people who molested me, the people that I'm aware that molested many people in Hollywood are going to pay. And I don't just mean going to pay some money because I don't care about their money. I've never wanted their money. I still don't. Uh, even if they had millions, that would not make me feel whole in my heart. That would not do anything for me. What would do something for me is knowing that other cases came forward and that they were put behind bars so they could stop hurting the children that they're hurting. That's what's most important. That's the resounding message. So with that said, we have supported this bill. We are continuing to support this bill. The bill for everybody who's not aware yet is called California AB 218. And what this bill will do specifically is create a three-year look-back window, which gives me and my friends the first time in history a chance to actually have three years to put a case together, bring the case forward, get all the evidence, get all the discovery, everything that needs to be done and get this thing happening. So this is very, very, very crucial because this is like a life changer for me. This gives me a chance for freedom. It gives me a chance for closure. And even if, you know, God forbid they're not convicted on, you know, other charges and go to jail, just getting their name out there to that exposure level you know, knowing that everybody knows to watch out for these guys, making them have to sign up and, and be a um, 
you know, on the list of, of sexual predators in the area and all of that kind of stuff. Every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. So anyway, amazing work today. I want to thank everybody, and I don't want to leave anybody out that we got to sign. Now, I want you to understand we had three days to pull off, you know, these signatures from the time that Child USA informed me we had a window of opportunity to get this letter in. So... Um, basically I have literally been sleeping like three hours a day trying to make this happen. I've been working nonstop and it's a miracle that we pulled off what we've pulled off. So number one, I want to thank from the bottom of my heart, the ladies, uh, from the Me Too movement who really, really stepped up and came forward and took my side over the last couple of days. And that is most importantly, a woman named Jessica Barth. Jessica, thank you so much. God bless you because you really were like so solid just like reaching out to people on my behalf, reconnecting me with people I hadn't spoken with in a while, just all kinds of stuff. And so thank you for that. Uh, we were able to get 14 names on the document, which I was actually going for six. So 14 is a huge accomplishment in my estimation. Um, and, you know... Every one of them is a survivor, every one of them is a victim, and every one of them is equally as valuable because each of our voices count, each of our voices matter. And the outreach was specifically for influential people in the industry so that they could put their names on the letter, but that does not mean it excludes the entire rest of the community. Instead, it's quite the opposite. We are actually reaching out to the entire community. We want everybody to call your senators, call the lawmakers in the state of California, call your Congress people, and please, please, do whatever you can to convince them that this is a mandatory bill. This has to pass. This has got to give people justice for closure. It's about closure. But anyway, um, so I want to go down the list of the people who did sign on within the small window of time that we had the ability to do it. And again, a huge, huge you know, heart and thanks to Jessica because she was really, really helpful over the last few days. But I want to thank Dominic Hewitt who is a Me Too survivor. I want to thank Caitlin Dullany, who is a Me Too survivor. I want to thank Sarah Ann Moss, who is a uh, Me Too survivor. These are all Weinstein victims, by the way. Uh, Sarah Scott, who is a Weinstein survivor. Lou Goldbold, who is a Weinstein survivor. Rosanna Arquette, who is a, a wonderful woman I've known for many years and is also a Weinstein survivor. Mira Sorvino, who is also a wonderful woman that I've known, uh, is also an incredible leader and advocate in this movement. And thank you so much. Uh, and um, of course, Jessica Chantal Cuisino, who is uh, also an advocate, also an activist. However, she's part of the Me Too movement, but she was part of another story. Uh, that involved James Toback, um, Jonathan Sheish, uh, who has been amazing also. I want to thank him for reaching out. God bless you. Um, and Natasha Mouth, who is also part of the Weinstein Group. So that's a really strong group of people. But on top of it, the one that, that you know, it's not a big name to everybody, but it's, it's the most meaningful was a... Uh, a friend of mine who we grew up together in the industry and you know let's just say he saw and experienced a lot of the same things that I did I'm not going to call him out right now because I'm putting this out there but all I want to say is that you know two people signed as John Doe on this list um, and you know between them and and it's just yeah there's like three people basically that are involved now that weren't involved yesterday, that weren't involved a month ago, a week ago, a year ago, and they're finally involved. And those people can not only bring justice, but can verify many, many of the things that I've been talking about all this time. So I can say with a great breath of relief that tonight for the first time, I do feel I have comrades in arms. I do feel that uh, people have stepped up and, and joined my side in this call for justice for the children. And the thing is, it's not about me and it's not about anybody else. It's about the children. We must protect 
the innocence of our children, no matter what, in this country, in this world, okay? Let's not divide by countries. Let's just say in this world, this is a sickness that is spread like a pariah across the entire world, and we must extinguish it. And the only way to extinguish it is by bringing light to it, by bringing it to the world's attention, by showing people how deep and how dark this really goes. And it does go deep, and it does go dark, as we've recently seen with the Epstein case, okay? Um, there's no joke. What's happened, the disappearance, the death, all of this stuff is amazing. You know, uh, it's just, it's staggering. I can't believe such incompetence is possible that somebody would let this happen. Somebody would let this slip through the fingertips. And I, I, I pray to God that our attorney general, Mr. Barr, actually does what he says and follows through with this. I also want to bring up something else on a separate note, but anyway, I want to say uh, the other men's names uh, that are involved, Bobby Jacoby, uh, who signed today, and also the two uh, men who went unnamed, who are child actors, that have agreed to testify in the case uh, as long as the case goes forward. So once this passes, we'll be able to bring multiple cases forward against the men that I've been talking about. And that is the most beautiful part of all this. So hopefully we can start an outreach at that point and we can start finding out the other victims from these men and we can heal a lot of hearts. And not only that, but most importantly, the most important thing is we can protect the children because these guys are still out there and, you know, the police aren't investigating them. The police aren't doing anything. One guy's on the run. You know, the other guy uh, is around L.A. And he's still successful at whatever he's doing. And then, you know, out of all the other guys in the ring that I spoke about initially, because there's now I've got about 10 names in this ring. And between all of these people, they're all still out there. They're all still in the business unless they died, which a couple of them have. They're out there. And they're abusing and hurting children, which is why we have been so vigilant in trying to get somebody to listen and remember i reported these names to the police back in 1993 when i was originally interviewed by the santa barbara police department when michael jackson was first being investigated they chose to not listen they uh, did not act like they cared they didn't even give me so they were from santa barbara and the reason why they said they supposedly never filed it was because they said it wasn't their district, it wasn't their precinct. So they said, well, you know, you're gonna have to talk to the Los Angeles precinct. I was 19 at the time. I was still within the statute of limitations. And they chose not to let that happen because they didn't pass the information along. They didn't even really tell me who to talk to. They just said, talk to somebody in Los Angeles. Well, how many 19 year old kids do you know that are gonna go running to like, call the police and be like, hey, let me report all these guys that I've been friends with. It doesn't happen that way because you have to first get through the brainwashing and realize that these people aren't really your friends. But again, they didn't want to hear that. So the point being, the, the case never went anywhere. Uh, it was never sent along. And in the end, um, nothing has happened. And nothing's happened for all these years because of the statute of limitations. So now is the time. Now is the time that we can finally get it all together. Hopefully that comes out clearly. Hopefully you all understand. And all of the evidence, by the way, has been documented into the truth documentary, which I have made. Okay. It's there. The, the film is there and it's a great film. Unfortunately, I still don't have distribution. <clears throat> we had a deal that was coming together at the time uh, that I did the Rolling Stone interview and it was in place and the people that we had to deal with dropped the ball and they didn't end up coming through with the finance that they promised to distribute the film or the distribution and they didn't line it up the proper way so we had to pull out of the deal and so now we're back to the drawing board so that is very frustrating i'm trying very hard to get the documentary out because once the documentary is out it will lay out all the information of the case and that's the most important thing is that people will be able to finally see exactly how it happened to myself, how everything that went down and how the moment that I met Corey Hame, it changed my life forever in a very good way, but also in a very bad way. Because from that moment on, 
I had information which made me a dangerous, I guess, person in LA or whatever because I had too much information. And so like that's really where it all started. But anyway, I'm going to get into all the details, all the facts you all fully understand once you see my film and God willing, you will see it this year. Um, I also want to say something else to make the film, to get it done. Because when we started the campaign, if everybody remembers way back, I was supposed to make a movie for $10 million. That movie didn't get made because the campaign was going great. And then this group of people started attacking me, uh, basically doing everything they could to discredit me, defame me, as they'd been doing for years, but in a much stronger way. And to the point where it cost me everything I had, I was like already financially drained because they destroyed my tour. And then from there, um, I ended up having to pay for security 24 seven because I had two death or actually two assaults and then, um, you know, a series of death threats. So because of all that, I ended up having to pay tons of money and you know so i was like now how am i going to tell this story so that's when i decided to do a documentary because a documentary is much cheaper than you know making a big film with like budgets and you know sets and actors and writers and all this stuff which is what i originally wanted to do but in the end i decided to make the documentary so i ended up taking a job that i really didn't want to take and you're going to find out about that in the coming weeks i don't want to say too much right now i just want to say that I was at a very vulnerable place and I took a job I didn't want to take to do a TV show which is going to be coming on in the coming months. I'm going to tell you more about it but um, I did it for the right reasons. I did it for the better good and then I was able to finance the film myself and we got the film done. So the point is that the film is done. We just need to unfortunately find somebody that's going to put it out there for us. that we have legal protections to make sure blah, 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 blah. Cause of course I invested all my money in it. We have to make sure that we can actually protect ourselves and you know, we don't lose it and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, it's complicated. And if you're not in the business, it would be hard for you to understand. But that said, that's a full update. That's everything right now. We're putting all of our forces together to hopefully make our voices loud enough to be able to actually push this bill through. So all of this can unfold and come to fruition the way it has in New York with the help of Child USA. Again, we were able to pass the bill in January, which is really a big part of what what yesterday you saw all the victims from Epstein and R. Kelly were able to come forward and put, you know, their complaints in and actually officially file suits because of the fact that the CVA is in place now and the one year window started in New York. So anyway, that's where we're at with that. And I've only got one fight in me at a time. And right now my fight is for children's rights and kids too. So please do me a favor. Whatever you do, whenever you talk about the subject of pedophilia, regardless if it's in Hollywood, regardless if it's in you know sports, the Catholic Church, the Boy Scouts, schools, I don't care. Please use the hashtag kids too. It's a capital K with the number two. And it shows people that we are all connected and that we're all listening because we had the Me Too movement and the Me Too movement is a very powerful thing. And it's an, it's a beautiful, let's involve them in this. Let's give them their own movement, their own voice. And I believe that's called the children's rights movement. And I believe that is on the cusp of breaking out nationally and across the globe. So please join me in just saying kids too. Thank you. God bless you, uh, Gina. I love you, Gina. Um, Gina's been a, a tremendous supporter for so long. So anyway, that's it. I love you all. Peace and love. God bless you. And, and, and I also want to say one last thing, which is that although we got some tremendous support and I'm so grateful for the people who joined me on this, there's a lot of people I reached out to that still didn't get back. And, you know, it's one thing to like you know, not want to get involved because, you know, you've got a personal stake in it or whatever. I don't know. But to not even call back, to not even acknowledge me. I mean, come on, people. This is children we're talking about. Can we remember this? Okay. I don't care what your manager, publicist, agent, whatever might tell you why it's not a good look to get involved or to support this. The bottom line is if you've been there yourself, if you're a victim then how could you not want to protect other kids? 
that's that's all I got to say about that. And I'm definitely not calling anybody out or naming any names. I just want to say, to me, I'm a little I'm a little, you know, flabbergasted that um, certain people didn't stand up and didn't come forward. But that's okay. I am so grateful for who did. God bless them. God bless you. God bless all of us. And let's hope that we can figure out a way to get through all of this craziness with love and understanding and truth. Peace and love, guys. I'll see you soon. The truth is out there waiting to be found. Wake up. Take the right pill. Join the red pill. You can't be Break the matrix. Free your mind. Take the red pill.